So, you've adopted a cat, and you need to know what a cat requires for consistent litter box use. This course will cover all of the common reasons for litter box aversion and the solutions. I'll also take you through all of the necessary components, including what type of box you will need, reasons for litter preferences, and what works best to entice your cat to venture into that box. I'm Dr. Rachel Geller, Certified Cat Behavior Specialist and author of the book, Saving the World, One Cat at a Time. Too often, behavioral issues can come between cats and their owners, and I've dedicated myself to breaking down these barriers and improving these relationships. My courses offer easy to implement solutions based on my lifelong understanding of cats and their behaviors. So now, let's help your cat. Our first topic that we're going to talk about is the box itself. But I want everyone to know that cats want to use their litter boxes. They are clean, fastidious animals. I want to reinforce that if a cat is not using her box, it is because something, someone, or even another cat is preventing her from using that box. And all of these can be real or imagined. They want to use the litter box. So first, you want to look at the size of the box. Do you have a kitten or an adult cache? Well, the box that you had when you first brought your kitten home is not going to be suitable for your cat now that she's fully grown. Kittens need smaller litter boxes. Cats need bigger litter boxes. And adult cats come in different sizes, just like people. So they need boxes of varying sizes, shapes, and side heights. I work with so many people who have big cats, like a full-grown Maine Coon cache, and the poor cat is trying to squeeze into this little box that's made for the size of a kitten. So make sure that as your cat gets bigger, your box gets bigger. And think about if your cat is older. Maybe she's a little bit arthritic, she's not moving quite as easily as she used to. Maybe she has trouble getting up and over the sides of the boxes. Perhaps she's a little bit overweight, or as I like to say, puffy. In this case, a box with low sides or a litter pan rather than a litter box might be suitable. If you are having a hard time finding a really big box with low sides, I suggest trying those storage containers that are made to slide under beds. Toss the cover and you have an ideal litter box for an older cat who might be overweight and has trouble climbing into that box. Most cats really dislike covered litter boxes, so take the cover off your box if you have a covered litter box. Now, a cover greatly reduces the cat's field of vision and ability to escape from a potential invader. Now, I know focusing on escape and the need to run away may seem like funny concepts for us in terms of thinking about using a litter box, but cats feel very vulnerable in their boxes, and they want to be able to see all the way around them. They want a full 360-degree view all around them when they are in that box, and a cover completely reduces the cat's ability to see all the way around her. The worst thing about the cover is it creates only one way for the cat to go in and out. So, if an invader or opponent were to appear, the only means of escape for that cat in the litter box is right into the opponent's face. So that's really not so great for the cat who's in the litter box. Covers have a lot of other downfalls as well. Covers make the litter box very dark, and they keep the litter from drying out. Covers also make it so we, the humans, don't notice if the litter box needs to be cleaned. A lot of cats don't like the automatic and self-cleaning boxes. These can be really scary for a cat. The cat may not be finished in there, and if the box starts cleaning itself, that can be a cause for litter box aversion. Once a cat experiences fear in the litter box, it can be difficult to get her to venture back into that box again 
She's going to associate the box with the fear. Now, really think about how high the sides are on that box. If the box is extremely high-sided, and I know some people have the high-sided boxes because it keeps the litter from going out over the edge, but your cat might feel too closed in and unable to see around her with those high sides. So you may need to look closely at the height of the sides on the box. And high-sided boxes are difficult for some cats to navigate. Older cats, arthritic cats, they have trouble climbing over those high sides. Another big cause for litter box aversion is the number of boxes that you have. If you have three cats, don't ask them to share one box. One of the surest ways to create a litter box problem is to have too few boxes for the amount of cats you have. My basic rule of thumb is to always have one more box than the amount of cats that you have. So, even if you only have one cat, I want you to have two boxes. If you have four cats, you should have five boxes. You don't want them to be competing for resources. Now, when I say to have multiple litter boxes, this doesn't mean you have three boxes next to each other in one room. That sort of defeats the purpose. The boxes need to be in multiple rooms and on multiple levels of the house. And make sure that where that box is placed, there is potential for the cat to escape. And the cat has clear, clean sight lines all around him. Cleanliness of the box is very important. Cats are super clean animals, and they will not use the box if it's dirty. You really need to clean that box every day. Now we're going to talk about location. So just like they say in real estate, location, location, location. Same with litter boxes. You can have the perfect box, but if it's in the wrong location, the cat still is not going to use it. So let's look at where we should place the box. A big thing I see in my work is that as people, we think a lot about privacy. As humans, we don't want anyone to view us when we're using the bathroom. Privacy is important to us, but cats want to be able to view everything around them. They don't want to be enclosed, they don't want to be blocked in, and they want to be able to see clearly all around them. So you want to choose a location that's wide open so that the cat can see all the way around her. So the opposite of what we think about in terms of privacy. Think about the location from a cat's perspective and not a human perspective. A lot of people like to put the litter box in the basement because they don't want to see the litter box. And people prefer it that way because the litter box is out of sight. But many cats have problems going up and down the stairs. And a lot of basements may be kind of damp and dank and not that pleasant for a cat. And if you have a multi-cat household and the cats don't always get along, it can be a harrowing journey on that narrow staircase down to the litter box for the cat who might be intimidated. So basements can be a problem for many reasons. Also, if the cat has to go and has trouble with bladder control, especially with older cats, they may not make it to the box if it's too far away. Closets are another really popular place for a litter box. But again, closets do not provide a 360 degree visual field. And if the, if the cat is ambushed and the litter box is in the closet, the only way for the cat to escape is right into the face of his opponent. There is no safe potential for escape when the litter box is placed in a closet. Don't wedge the litter box under small things or into small spaces. For instance, you don't want to place the litter box under a desk. If you're using your bathroom as a litter box location, you want to make sure the litter box is not under the sink or behind the toilet or not tucked too tightly into a corner. Stairs can be a problem for cats who are older, arthritic, or overweight. Stairs are also problematic for cats who have medical issues that can affect litter box use, such as 
kidney disease, bladder issues, urinary tract infections, or hyperthyroidism. Hyperthyroidism makes cats have to go more often, so this does affect litter box use. Stairs can be a big problem in a multi-cat household and can really affect litter box use. The stairs can be a place where an intimidated cat is afraid to pass a higher ranking cat. If the only place a cat can get to his box is up a set of stairs or down a set of stairs, this can be a reason for a litter box problem. When you're looking where to place the box within the room, consider the cat's view. You want the box on the opposite wall from the doorway so a cat can see out of the room and into the hallway. Make sure the box isn't tucked in a corner or right against a wall. If the box is against the wall, make sure it's the wall that's on the opposite side of the entrance so your cat can see all around and the visual field includes the entrance to the room and out into that hallway. You want the cat to be able to see if another cat is coming into the room. And remember, these cats can be real or imagined. A lot of cats prefer a room that has more than one entrance. So if the enemy, and again, this enemy can be real or imagined, even a single cat in the family can get this feeling. If the enemy comes in one way, the cat can escape the other way. This clear visual field is really, really important to a cat. Cats feel vulnerable when they are in their litter boxes. They require a clear field of vision all around them. They always want to be able to see potential invaders. And I'm stressing these invaders can be real or imagined. Single cats in the household get this feeling. Companion cats who get along well can get these feelings too. It's a very important thing to a cat. And again, make sure the litter box is in close proximity to the household gathering place. Your cat wants to go where you are. Bathrooms, mudrooms, annexes, basements, attics. These are all popular locations for humans for litter boxes. But your cat does not want to go spelunking on an archaeological dig just to get to his litter box. Now, the type of litter is really important to consider. First, let's talk about the texture of the litter. Cats have sensitive paws, and cats are tactile creatures. So the texture of the litter is very important to a cat. The best type of litter has a soft, sandy texture that would replicate what they would get if they were outside. Also, the scented litters are popular with people because we want to be able to mask or cover up the scent. But a lot of cats don't like perfumey, scented litters. So, if you are having litter box trouble, see if your litter is scented or unscented. That could make a difference to your cat. Litter level is important too. You need enough litter in the box so the cat can dig around, but you don't want it to be super high. So about two to three inches of litter is a good level. And you do want to make sure that the entire box is covered with litter, no bare spots. Now, say you want to try abruptly changing litters, or say you're the type who always buys whatever litter is on sale. This probably is not going to be great for your cat. You may be thinking that any old litter that's on sale will probably do the trick, but Cats do not like change. Cats are highly reactive to change, and so changing the litter all the time is not going to work for your cat. If you do need to change the brand of your litter for some reason, perhaps you've decided that the litter is too dusty or your cat is sensitive to the texture, the best thing to do is mix in a little bit of the new litter with the old litter and do this a little bit at a time. Start off with a one quarter new litter to three quarters old litter ratio and slowly move the ratio in the direction of more of the new and less of the old. Go slowly, be incremental because cats don't like change. 
You never want to go from zero to 60 when it comes to cats. Another issue to consider with litter box aversion is cats who have overly sensitive paws, and especially declawed cats. A lot of declawed cats find that the litter hurts their paws because their paws have become overly sensitive and the nerves have been exposed from the declawing surgery. So, if you have a cat who has extremely sensitive paws for whatever reason, you may want to consider a litter box that actually doesn't have any litter in it at all. Sometimes, you might have to cut up some old bedding or rip up old t-shirts and have something soft in there if you have a cat that has really sensitive paws. Now, there are also a lot of human causes of litter box aversion. Some of the conveniences we like are not so great for our cats. The first one is plastic liners. This is a perfect example of a human convenience that is really not great for your cash. So it's easy for us, right? We can just scoop up the entire plastic liner and toss it. Super easy. But the cat's claws can get stuck in the plastic, which can hurt and scare the cat. And also, plastic liners can cause the urine to pool. And this is not very attractive to the cat for using her box. I do not recommend using plastic liners in the litter box. Another culprit of litter box aversion can be scented litter. Many cats don't like that artificial, perfumey, scented smell. And typically in the outdoors, the soil isn't perfumed or scented. So it's not going to feel realistic to the cat. Litter with a scent does not replicate what a cat would find outdoors. Cleanliness is a huge issue. People get lazy with cleaning the box. And I think this is another problem with covered boxes too, in addition to everything else I already went over. With a covered box, people don't always see that the box is dirty, out of sight, out of mind. And cleanliness can definitely be a human cause of litter box aversion. Cleaning products can also affect litter box use. Using products that are really strong or that are overly scented is not appealing to a cat. The plastic of the litter box does absorb the odor. So cleaning products that are too strong and too perfumey can be a human cause of litter box aversion. I suggest an unscented or all natural cleaning product for best results. Now, if you have a multi-cat household, the relationship between companion cats can greatly affect litter box use. So first, let's look at competition for resources. This means look at how many boxes are there and how many cats you have, because litter boxes are territory for a cat. You never want to set up a situation where the cats are going to compete for litter box use. One of the surest ways to cause litter box problems in a multi-cat household is to have too many cats and not enough boxes. The best case scenario is one more litter box than the number of cats you have. If you have three cats, there should be four litter boxes. The litter boxes should be spread throughout the house so that they are on multi-levels of the house and in different rooms in the house. Typically, cats will have their own favorite area and their own claim territory within the home. Take that into consideration when you're placing your litter boxes in different areas. If a cat always has the same napping spot, that is a great location for a litter box. If there is a cat tree that the cat prefers, that is a good location for a litter box. Think about your cat's preferred areas. A litter box can go in one appealing area that goes for one cat, in another area for another cat, and so forth. If you see one cat guarding the litter box or chasing another cat which is on her journey to use the litter box, these are signs that either there aren't enough litter boxes for your cats or the litter boxes aren't placed in the right locations. 
So you need to look at that very closely when you decide where you're going to place the box. You don't want the pathway to the litter box to be a location where one cat will ambush the other cat. Overcrowding is a major cause of litter box problems. If there aren't enough boxes, not only does it lead to the box not being clean enough, but it will lead to territorial behavior between your cats. There is a product that you can use to help the relationship between companion cats when it comes to litter box use, and these are pheromone products. These products are a synthetic version of your cat's own friendly, feel-good pheromones. And by spraying these products around the periphery of the box, you can help calm your cats enough to promote litter box use and prevent litter box territorial behavior. Make sure you have enough litter boxes, consider the location, and be aware of those inter-cat relationships. If your cat is still not using the box, despite trying everything, we have one more trick. I suggest a method that I call crate training. And for this, I recommend a large dog crate. Use a crate that is at least 36 inches long by 23 inches wide with a height of 25 inches. You can even go up to a crate as large as 42 inches long by 28 inches wide and 30 inches high. Most cats who aren't using the litter box due to anxiety, fear, or territory issues will actually feel better in the crate. So don't feel sad. They may prefer being in a smaller space. And almost all cats would prefer two weeks of crate training over being surrendered to a shelter. If your cat does seem nervous, cover the crate with a comforter or a blanket. You can also spray the crate with a synthetic version of a cat's natural calming hormones. And these pheromone products are available at any pet supply store. Now, you're going to have nothing in this crate except for the cat's food, water, and a litter box. No cat bed, no blanket, nothing soft and absorbent. With this setup, if the cat does not use the litter box, She's going to be sitting in her own pee, and most cats really, really dislike that. They are clean creatures. They don't want to sit in their pee. The cat's only choice will be sitting in her own pee or using the box. So this is going to force the cat to use the litter box. Now, while your cat is still in the crate, you can play with him, groom him, and love him. If you have a cat who's a real hardcore peer and this still isn't working, what we can do is cover the entire bottom of the crate with litter boxes. It will be litter boxes and the only part of the floor that is not a litter box will be the cat's food and water. This is going to really force that cat to use her box. I usually recommend two weeks in the crate. Don't cut corners because we're creating a new habit. Now, I know it's going to be difficult, but the cat needs to stay in there for two weeks. Then, after the two weeks, we're going to do a gradual reintroduction back into the home. Once you see that the cat has used the box, the cat can be let out of the crate for 10 minutes, and then the cat goes back into the crate. Do that for a few days. 10 minutes out of the crate when you see pee in the box. Next, once you see the cat has used the box, we will go up to 20 minutes out, and then the cat goes back in the crate, and so forth. So as you see, we will slowly re-enter the cat back into the household. And the key is to do it gradually and incrementally. When we start letting the cat out for longer periods of time, we're going to place litter boxes around the house, and we're going to supervise that cat until we're 100% sure that she's using the litter box consistently. In conclusion, the litter box is an important accessory for a cat. To your cat, 
it's not just a plastic container filled with any old type of litter and stuck somewhere in the house. If you put a little thought into it, I'm confident your cat will have success. I hope this course helps you choose the right litter box. Think about what type of litter may be suitable for your cat and help you choose the perfect location for your cat's box. If you keep the tips from this course in mind, your adopted cat will thrive and bring you and your family years of companionship and joy. Thanks for joining my course, and I do hope to see you in the next one.